I'm real. I'm in front of this live on you. Okay. Okay, guys, welcome. Welcome to uh, this this kind of new thing that we're doing. We're, we're calling it the um, we're calling it the Monday Blethers. <laughs> um, so it's just basically um, as things um, as things come up, I guess, like sort of dog training questions and things that things that we find interesting. You know, kind of bring them bring them to this forum and um, and have a chat about them. So if you want to make comments or anything like that at any point, please do feel free. Um, and I'll be watching those and, and we'll answer comments and it would be really great to have a kind of two-way two -way stream with you. So today we're talking about, is there such a thing as the perfect dog? Now, this came from um, a chat that I had with some friends, actually. I bumped into them in the park and they were asking, you know, how's training going with Elvis? And they're somebody who's previously done some training with Alan and, and been clan dog members. And um, uh, Pippa and um, Nick, if you're out there, hello. Um, we were just chatting about, you know, like our own personal kind of dog training struggles and Elvis is on his long line and, you know, I'm just saying, oh, the, you know, the thing that I really struggle with is is um, his interaction with other dogs. You know, he's super friendly and he's super boisterous and all he wants to do is kind of, you know, like meet other dogs and jump on them and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And that's my, like, kind of personal struggle. And, and they've never had that struggle with Samuni. You know, she's always been cool and quite happy to see other dogs or, or, or not. And, you know, and the, the struggle that they had was that she would all that they would struggle with her, you know, like running off on scents and things like that, um, and that they would be worried that they might lose her, which is um, something that I've just never had a problem with with Elvis. You know, like it's never been a, it's never been a thing, <laughs> like him leaving me like that. Um, and it just kind of brought to mind that we sort of have this, we have this thing, don't we? You know, about, you know, like we, you walk by and you think, oh god, I really wish my dog would. Um, do that you know so i watch the moon i think god i just wish elvis would sit there calmly when there's another dog god i really wish he would um and you get really het up about it don't you? you think oh god you know like why doesn't my dog do that when other dogs do it and really that dog has a struggle too <laughs> so you know like is there such a thing as the perfect dog i don't know what, what you know what do you think Alan? well i mean I've, as you know i've been sort of helping people i think about five and a half thousand people now for for many years since about 1991 and i've heard lots of people's stories and i get different perceptions of what people think is the perfect dog lots of people will, will refer to otto as oh, he's absolutely perfect he's lovely he's a lovely guy and he's very well trained but the, what we're talking about is what people's own perception of, of, of the, the perfect dog you can have a dog that someone person would say it doesn't do x y z but it may not be but it might be the perfect dog for you because it fulfills your needs the dog is safe it's happy it has a good life as, as a dog and um, so don't be comparing your your own dog with other people that's that's kind of that's kind of where, where i'm going people with maybe first time owners will will perhaps be be walking in a park or in a field or somewhere and they see other people with their dog um, and that's what they want that's what we want to be able to go out and enjoy the dog that's what we're all about um but they, they, would, they don't necessarily know that perhaps the work that's going into the, to, to get the dog to that level, um, the, the, you know, the understanding the own dog's needs, who that person is. So really, just a case of um, you finding the right dog, the right, the, the right breed, the right energy, matching the energy for your uh, with your with dog is is, um, uh, is is of paramount importance in the first place. So you make sure you've got the best chance possible. But um, regardless of what you're saying, you know that you're, you're right. That the, the perfect dog's yet to be born, cat. You know, then it's about don't look for that 100% perfection. It's just not going to happen. My own dog included, all the dogs I've ever had. You know, because somebody could compare my own highly trained gun dog Otto um, with a field trials dog, who is just spot on all the time. Yeah, but that's a, that's a different sort of lifestyle. So don't don't compare your dog with others. Make sure that you bring out the best possible in your own dog. Then you'll have. The perfect dog for you that's kind of where my point is going kind of, yeah. yeah i think um it's something that, something that certainly gets to you doesn't it as a person like i've got this little comment here i'll put it up comparison is the thief of joy and this is one that um mm -hmm. it's something i've heard before but it's actually something one of the members said as well once and she made um she, you know she made a bit of an of analogy in our members group and she's talking about her dog and she was saying oh god you know like i just had one of those days where i walk around and i see everyone else's dog behaving you know and i just feel like they're holding like massive great big wads of dollars in their hand going yeah check my dog out look how good he is he's walking to heel and he's sat and he's doing this and he's ignoring your dog um you know and i'm kind of scraping around on the ground trying to find these pennies <laughs> you know while, my, while the, you know while her dog is, is struggling with all these kind of things and like that mentality is a really difficult one to get out of 
isn't it, when you're training, especially when you've put loads of effort in. You know, like you personally put a lot of effort in and you still feel like, oh, you know, like, why isn't my dog doing what other dogs do? You know, like, I think it's time constraints as well, Cab. You know, people will say, uh, maybe come from a, 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 a still a learning phase, but I'm not sure how many people understand, you know, the work that's involved, uh, the, 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 the variables. That's the big thing. Yeah, that's why you can't put a time on thing. And the, and the point I'm getting is when people kind of put a time on their head, my dog should be doing this by now. Um, they start kind of thinking, well, it's not happening, so they kind of throw the towel and they give up. Um, but when you have a better understanding of what's involved, uh, get the best resources possible to, to set your dog up for success, and a, and a really good understanding of how long it takes and what's involved in doing that, then you know you, you and your dog are, are, are destined for a, for a good life. It's the people who who, who kind of rush things, they don't ex they don't understand how long it takes to, to get a dog to the certain level that they want it to do. They kind of, they kind of give up a wee bit early is, is the thing to avoid, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm going through this right now. I mean, you've seen, you've seen as well, you know, like, I've, you know, and I've obviously put a lot of effort in with Elvis, you know, like, but, but, in, but in the reality of, like, not being a professional dog trainer, you know, like, working towards that and, and you know, getting really involved in it and sure, having, like, loads of, like contact with dog training is a thing but you know like he's my first dog and it, this is the first dog i have trained um i think you'll back me up and say he's not um he's not he's not the most challenging dog you could ever have to train but neither is he the easiest you know <laughs> like he's he's got yeah, his own yeah yeah well what you've been saying is that he's got his own what personality characteristics yeah yeah, you know, yeah and totally, that's the, so. that, and, and that's the beautiful thing about with dogs as well cat you know you we don't get you know a breed you get breed traits um and you'll get the certain energy levels to match a breed. Um, but I have had people many years ago, I remember a lady, um, and it was many years ago, 20 years ago, who a contact been asked for um, my help to train her dog towards agility. And I said, I'd be happy to help you. And asked me a little bit about her dog, and it was a great day. <laughs> now, she, she wasn't really talking about, you know, um, just the fun side of agility. She was actually wanting to compete. With, yeah. a, with a great day and I said well okay have you really kind of give us a good thinking through because it's not really the machine for that sort of thing <laughs> if you're looking to win at anything that is anyway you know so but yeah um you know I've kind of lost my train of thought there but really get the get the right dog for, for the job that you want but how you envision it don't don't get a dog because you like that color or you you know and I know a lot of people here will, will do the, do their due diligence but I have heard many comments over my 47 years of training dogs since God knows how many people uh, I've trained now, but um, yeah, make sure you you you, uh, you have not unrealistic expectations from your dog, its character. Get to know its breed, get to know its personality, um, and then sort of kind of work with your dog as opposed to have expectations of that breed or or that kind of thing. That's the, that's the biggest mistake people make, I think, sometimes. Yeah, totally. They've got, they've got their own personality, haven't they? I mean, you you sort of know you know. Like, I mean, I knew I was getting a terrier. I knew I was going to get certain. Or, I mean, you you sort of assume you're going to get certain like things that come along with those terriers. Um, and I think Elvis is a very terrier terrier, if that makes sense. Like he's you know, <laughs> like he's got that really has got that kind of terrier determination in him, which um, you know is obviously a breed trait, but he's he's really got that quite strongly. Um, and you and but yet you uh i don't know what the word is you almost don't especially as a first time dog owner you sort of think to yourself oh but, but yeah he's going to do all these things but he'll be fine i'll still be the training will still you know like somehow magically work i'll do all these like i'll follow my thing and i'll do this and i'll train him this and this this and this and then at the other side of it he'll he'll do all these things that i need him to do whereas that's not actually the case is it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it's not actually that simple when you when you when it when you sort of break it down it doesn't really happen like that at all um but you don't know that when you first start trying to do all this stuff i think <laughs> if that makes sense am i making sense well, I, I think you've i think you've done very well i was in the first place but um obviously you now we, we kind of teamed up and spent our time going through it all um but yeah i mean elvis is is a product of your work as as, as i'll say to everybody else you know do the work reap the rewards and it's not just you that reaps the rewards it's your dog as well for you know for, for putting the work in so yeah yeah, he, yeah. he's doing well yeah, yeah i'm and not trying to i'm not trying to make this about me and elvis i'm just kind of using that no. as an example of like you you know like sometimes getting those expectations knocked is what knocks you off your your path if you know what i mean you know, like you sort of think, oh, I'm doing all this stuff and it's going there and then it doesn't happen. And then that's where, like you say, that's where it all kind of goes like a bit belly up, isn't it? Because you sort of go, yeah. oh, 
Why isn't it yeah. not working? <laughs> and, do- and dog training is like a graph. I wanted to go have a bloody COVID graph or something. You know, I remember when I had the dog training school, um, and I was licensed for about forty six dogs a day. But I'd take in anywhere between three and six dogs for residential training. Some for weeks, some for months, if they need to be rehabilitated or whatever. And obviously, the perfect way to 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 train a dog is short and often, as opposed to long periods of time. You ask too much attention span for the dog. So, I take the dog out and uh, give it five or ten minutes, a wee bit of um, um, sniffing around, having its peas and poos, and then I want five or ten minutes of your concentrated time. And I'd worked a certain level with that dog uh, for 10, 15 minutes, put it back in its kennel, and then bring the next one out and repeat that that one until I'd done the fourth or fifth or sixth dog, however many I had. And after about an hour and a half, I'd be back to the first dog. So the dog's only been with me about an hour and a half before. It's had a nice rest and bring it out. And it's almost like sometimes you're talking to a different dog, like you've never met. You think, hang on, you had this, you had this nailed in an hour and a half. Nah. So, you know, so you, you, you will get good days and you get bad days. And that's depending on many, many things. Um, your dog's sort of mental welfare. Are they hyper? Have they not been out for a couple of days? Uh, are they too tired? Are they young? Are they old? It's about an understanding of the dog and, and kind of picking your battles so that you always succeed or succeed as, as much as you can. Uh, looking at your dog's energy levels, when's the best time uh, to take them out training, finding out about um, what is special to your dog. So don't go with this blanket, dogs like toys. Yeah, some dogs like toys, some dogs that I've met just don't like playing at all. So we're going to find something kind of reward for the dog. So um, if, you're, if you're looking for the perfect dog, stop. <laughs> if you're looking for a really good dog, the best dog you can make your dog, uh, then you know, do your homework, find out all about your dog, uh, and then sort of put your foundations in first. Don't rush it. Don't go from, we, we, at Clam Dog, we talk about four stages of training. So many people who are actually in stage one of training, they kind of jump to twos and threes. They miss out long line training. They miss all the essential things. And, and you know, the last year and a half has been a nightmare for our dogs, for everybody trained otherwise. It's been, certainly young ones, we all know the reasons why. Um, they've just not been able to be exposed to the right type of environment um, at the at times that they needed. And there's a lot of fearful dogs out there, a lot of reactive dogs out there um, uh, as, a, as a result of this. So there's a lot of dogs out there that need help at the moment. So that's really what Kat and I are about to try and help as many people to say, right, there is trouble out there and still to come through as the dogs mature, that will manifest in different ways, which is why right now, guys, dog training globally is so important because we've got so many. We all, we all know that story just now. So thanks for all that should be here because if you want, you want, you're not taking it seriously. So we're here to help you, and uh, but don't look for the perfect dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I've definitely Something noticed like that. Lo- yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and really, like you say, you're very you 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 must absolutely look at the positives, haven't you? And be like, um, and be very blessed about the things that you don't have to train. You know, like. Just because you have one particular struggle, it probably means that your dog is probably very strong in another area. You know, like we've both got very sociable dogs who are just naturally sociable dogs. So we, we, we're not having to try and feed that confidence all the time because they're just kind of naturally confident dogs. And that, you know, you've got to think, all right, well, maybe sometimes it's a bit difficult to rein them in around other dogs. But but I'm not on the other side of it, which I could be. So, you know, you've kind of got to take the positives about your dog, haven't you? And sort of think, well, look at all these amazing things that I've got, even though I might yeah. not have, I might not have, you know, you get, you certainly get fixated on the, on the problem that you have or the one or two problems that you have. Mm-hmm. And you start to think they're the worst things in the world. And when you actually really it could be, you know, the dog, I think I, you know, like I said earlier, I sort of see other dogs like walking calmly past other dogs and I just think oh god how awesome would that be but then I don't know they might be getting home and barking at the windows and and doing all sorts of things in the garden whereas I get home and he's an absolute dream in the house so you know you um you've got to you, you don't just just because you don't see other people's struggles doesn't mean they're not having them you know no for sure for sure yeah. well what, I'd like to ask a question to him out there what's your not so much your, your biggest problem is uh, the stuff that Kat and I are talking about are expectations I suppose has anybody uh, either new, new new to living with dogs I don't describe anybody as owning a dog I don't own a dog a dog lives with me um, or I live with him sometimes I never know which is which <laughs> uh, has anybody got uh, any comments they would like to, to, to make with regards to their own learn their own journey of learning with regards to dogs and 
and, and about slowing it down and about realising this is going to take a lot longer than than, uh, than I first anticipated. I mean, I don't know, I think we've got about 30, 31 people here. And there's yeah, lots so, of comments here, but I don't, can you, can you see the yeah, comments? Yeah, I can see them, yeah. So, okay. uh, yeah, so... Um, Deborah Patterson of of Snorri fame. So we both oh, yeah. we both met Snorri. Um, so she says she's worked hard on training Snorri not to jump up, um, and that for the most part he's 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 good with adults. Um, but he did jump up on her niece at the week and niece and nephew at the weekend. But he isn't exposed to kids very much. So I guess that's one of those things where you've got to sort of say it's a different thing, isn't it? You know, to a dog, it's not necessarily the same thing. That environment changed, the fact has changed. And, you know, and, um, and she says, you know, obviously Snorri's a pretty big personality and she, she loves that about him, but she feels that she's constantly learning and training with different situations. So I think Deborah's pretty sorted really, isn't she? She's got the right attitude. Yeah, definitely. I mean, De Deborah, we, we've met, we, we know each other personally. I've looked after Snorri for you. He's a great guy, big gentle bull, um, but he is a big uh, guy. <laughs> and also that, fact that in fact he's a, he's a big guy jumping up a wee kid, polite and well-mannered as he is with regards to his temperament, his personality. Uh, he doesn't see it that way. So it's about controlling the situation. And as Kat said, if, I've got an old saying, kind of metaphorically, if I've got a dog that chases sheep, I take it to the farm. Now, I've actually done that, but I mean metaphorically, if we've got a dog, if we, if we identify a particular dog's got a particular problem, then we work on that particular problem to help the dog so that it no longer be a problem. So in your case, if you're getting youngsters, maybe friends or family visit to the house, you can set that up through conversation, communication. I'll be in the door at 10 minutes, that's fine. You put Snorri in a lead and you make sure it's all calmed down so that we, we, we get the opportunity to praise him for um, that, that controlled introduction, okay? Other big thing about kids, guys, is kids and dogs are great together. Kids and dog training are not so good together. Okay, so it's, there is an element of controlling our kids wherever possible. I know youngsters can be high energy. You know, when we're, when we're dealing with young pups and, um, and and young kids as well, that's a big high energy. We've got to be able to control that, all right? So yeah, just be more control with that, Deborah. And I'm sure that Snowy will come in. He understands he's a smart guy, so do be a bit work with him. Uh, remember, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Rather than just one, if you've got your family are there for an hour or so, ask the kids to come and go a few times wherever you can. I don't know how old the kids are or whatever, but you, you know what I mean. Any, any further help, you can drop an email. You've got my email anyway. Okay, let us know. Okay, right. So, so Jane says she's most jealous of other dogs' recall, but she's only got an 11 month old lab and he's a work in progress. So, deaf ear when he gets his nose down. <laughs> good days are not so good, you know, like. I think that's that's pretty standard for everyone with an eleven month old eleven month old dog, is it not? <laughs> yeah, it, that, that reading between the lines, and, and and please correct me if I'm wrong here, Jane. But deaf here when his nose goes to the ground, there's good days and not so good. So, eleven month old lab, yeah. Um, usually they want to, to please us, they like interacting with us, that kind of typical breed. Um, deaf here, which means that you're probably not being able to. You're not able to, to do the recall, which means you're probably not using a long line. Let me know if that, that's the case or not, because it's it, a little month old lab. Um, this is long line training just now, okay? Uh, and that, that's all available as well. But long line training, ping me up a wee message, let me know if you're using it or not, or, or if we can help you further regards to how, how that works, okay? So Catherine says she expects too much regarding exciting situations. Uh, it's catch twenty two. She's carried on saying wants to socialise, um, but sometimes not ready. Yeah, I, I'm not. I mean, you kind of answered your own question there. Eh? <laughs> expect too much. We do expect too much, don't we? We sort of think, well, I've trained you to do this. Why can't you do it? Um, and that's where you have to look. I think at yourself and go, well, I thought I trained you to do it, but obviously I haven't because you're not doing it. <laughs> so you know, you've 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 sort of set the dog up to to fail a little bit in that sense, or not. That's maybe not the right way to put it, but just that you've. Um, if your dog's not doing it in that situation, it's it's just that they don't understand or they're not ready to do it in that situation. You haven't done the training or they're not mature enough for that environment or, yeah. you know, dogs don't and do it, things to deliberately annoy us. And, it, and it's not about, um, you know, avoiding areas. People, a lot of people will have a problem instead of actually addressing the problem. For example, if, if a dog's reactive, they say, right, I'm going to go out at four o'clock in the morning. I've had many. This is These are all true stories. People going out at four in the morning in remote places so they wouldn't actually ever meet a dog but they never thought about actually helping the dog and trying to desensitize the dog in that way that was their kind of uh, the management style of it all um so yeah slow it down katriona um you you, you said it you've got unrealistic expectations do the work rather than avoid the situation go to the exciting situation but learn how to do it in a, in a controlled and calm way okay 
what's Pamela saying? It's a bit yeah. of a big one. It's going to cut us off on the screen. But she did not realise that teaching a dog how to walk on a leash would be so hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Sky was my first puppy, and I saw the people walking their dogs. Yeah, and just didn't appreciate how hard it was and how much effort's gone in. I mean, there are the there are the extremely lucky people whose dogs just get it straight away. But I'd say they're in the minority rather than the majority. Um, but yeah, the other, you, the other thing you, is you Regards to the regards to Sky Pam because we've met and I know Sky, um, you know Sky is off the, she's a quite an excitable disposition. She's you know, um, and she's a wee bit nervy as well as we know. Um, so that whole process if I could get her calmed down and and tuning for the environment rather than in the environment as well. I know it's hard. You, know, you, you kind of live in town with the rest of it, but she is a, uh, a, a excitable um, wee dog. And, and that is part of your challenge as well, is to because we don't really learn much when we're in that state of mind. So a lot of it is, is all the calming stuff that I know that you remember. So I remember the clan dog. So you, yeah. you've got all these kind of exercises that we're doing to, to, to teach high, you to do that. But you're high five that. for that struggle, Pamela. High five for that struggle. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> yeah. um, so Lauren, said, some of these are quite big comments. So I'm not going to put them on the screen because I'll take up the whole thing. But um, I think Lauren says the biggest thing they've learned about is burning Ozzy's energy off before they do things. Yeah, totally, absolutely. Um, Marnie, Marnie said, I naively thought that it would be much easier having a dog and he'd just slot into my life and it would all be nice and easy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for your honesty, Marnie. You're not alone there. You're not alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, in reality, Reggie's been quite difficult at times. Um, uh yeah so i mean marnie's a member we know we know marnie and all the great work she's done um and i think we all love reggie we've all got a special part special spot in our hearts for reggie um and she says thank you so good for having clan dog for advice so yes thank you um thanks uh, marnie um louise is a bit of a big one i'll put it up um spent every day training and learning with diesel because he has many issues a very anxious boy and what he will be fantastic at responding to one minute would completely change the next depending on the situation Never give up on him um, and wouldn't change a single day. Oh, thanks, Louise. Well, that's great. That's that's how we feel about him, isn't it? Louise, I remember, how, I don't know how many years ago that was, we met Louise and Diesel. I think you just got Diesel. Diesel was, uh, um, I wish there was a two-week conversation I was supposed to. I can tell everybody here that Louise Skin has done an amazing job with that dog, Diesel. I know their story personally. And that, what your last comment there, Louise, is spot on. You never give up on him. You've done an amazing job. You should be proud of yourself. Leave it there. So Victoria's a dog walker in West Lynch. She says, seeing lots more dogs who are very reactive. Yeah, totally. I think mm. we are, really are. Um, advising people to keep up with socialising. Yeah, sure. Um, hope it's yeah. good advice to give. Um, yeah, just as long as it's done right, I think Alan will agree on that one. There's social, there's, there's, there's socialising and then there's like throwing a dog that's fearful in at the deep end, which is not what you want to do. So. Um, and, it's also, and it's also about, sort of, again, we're all about sort of the calmer sort of things. So... As a dog walker, Victoria, thanks for your message there. That you both probably, uh, I would imagine, maybe walk a small pack. You'll probably see other people with small packs. So it's about getting the the um, the, 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 the teaching the, uh, any dog um, the correct way to uh, approach and interact with other dogs. I.e., it's all well and good. We see even just two dogs in the park. Look, my dog's playing with your dog, and it all becomes very exciting. Then it becomes too exciting. The adrenaline comes up, and then it was wrong. So what I'm saying is, nice and calm. Uh, allow dogs to play different. Some dogs like to play rough. They're not trying to hurt. Other dogs will really be fearful of that. Some dogs will, uh, are really sort of kind of gentle with it. It's about matching dogs' personalities as well. So, yeah, socialising, you're right, is essential. And that's part of the thing that's this whole COVID thing is, is, is screwed up for dogs at the moment. They've not had people at the door. The ding dong doorbells, dogs are now reacting to that. Um, people in the house. Uh, I've been, I will go, I think about three or four one-to-one -one sessions in the last 10 12 days where they have been really fearful a very recent one was on the edge of fear aggression obviously we'll not go too deep into that but it was uh, so fearful it felt it had to protect itself from anybody and that's the kind of stuff that's coming through so please guys if you've got a dog that's start to show signs by the way dogs don't go through phases that's another thing i've heard quite a lot my dog started doing this uh, and i thought it was going through a phase and i thought we'd come out of it Please don't take that out of mind attitude. If dogs start showing signs of stress or fears or anything else, they can start self-reinforcing. And now that we know how to help that dog, which is through knowledge and knowing how to interact with it properly, we can accidentally make it worse sometimes, okay? I'm not going to tell this, how we uh, handling errors, feeding at the wrong times, 
coming above and uh, there's a number of things okay um but yeah that's the kind of stuff that's coming through fearful dogs not just fearful of people entering their home or the, or the garden or whatever outside as well uh, we've not been able to do the street work the traffic's not been there so depending where your environment is really be aware of that and try to help your dog expose it to its own um environment as much as you can and get help if you think your dog needs it yeah i think the other thing that's worth thinking about is you know like we sort of we're, we're we're now in an environment where there are a lot more dogs and i'm aware I'm, I'm probably a little bit more switched on to dogs than i was before but i certainly feel like over the last year there are more dogs and i think that's you know like it's pretty well documented in the news isn't it something like 25 percent increase or something in the number of dogs around so the, you now can't go out without seeing another dog like it's just not a thing <laughs> you know like so you've got to it's not even a case of like oh i might get away with it unless you're going to walk your dog at three o'clock in the morning you know you're going to see another dog it doesn't really matter where you go I can, like we're pretty remote here well remote's not the right word rural mm. you know i can walk out the back of my my back door and go up go up the hillside and i do that two or three times do that walk that kind of stretch two or three times a week probably um and it's very rare that i don't meet another dog or i don't meet somebody or i don't you know like so unless you really are out in the middle of nowhere it's not really an optional thing anymore training is it <laughs> you you know like and the more dogs that that kind of that are coming out then it's um the, the more and more important it's going to be that we've got we've got really good um control if that's the word you want to use over our dogs i think because it's only going to become more and more of a problem the government are looking more and more about our dog laws and you know I, i'm all but i want to use the word fearful myself of laws that were coming into Leash place where uh, with regards to you must keep your dog in a lead in public at all times yeah like it's it's quite common in america and so, i mean it's yeah. all down to the state i mean it's state by state in, in america isn't it yeah. it's very common and like i totally agree i think as a dog community we should be really looking at ourselves and saying right we need to put the effort in here otherwise we're going to end up in that situation where we can't let mm -hmm. our dogs off leads anymore yeah. Yeah. you know so like and um, also because of what we do all we hear it all the time cat you know we people are saying yeah. well, i have an issue uh, I, I, we, you know, I have an issue because I was out either just walking my dog on a lead or training my dog or on a long line or whatever, and somebody else's dog came running in. And it's not necessarily just to, you know, there's not always a fight involved. It's not always an aggressive dog. There, there are a few out there. However, just the fact that somebody else's dog is over there, when your dog is, is if your dog doesn't have a recall, please, please, please make sure it has before it gets off a lead. I'll give you a very short story. Just a couple of days ago, uh, it was a local lady, so um very luckily who i went for a dog walk with a friend uh this was yesterday in fact um and she said she asked me can you know can we see a dog uh we had a quick discussion and she had uh, lost one dog out of two which is a beagle and it had a tracker on it and she had last seen on her app which sadly lost power um three thousand feet up a hill cut a long story short she got it back at half past six the next morning covered in ticks a few cuts and grazes and god knows where it had been these are the nightmare stories that we want to avoid, guys. Okay, um, if your dog doesn't have a recall, please, please get some help out to get to get them. Don't let it be running about over the place unless you've got a solid recall. It's likely to get in trouble. So here's a here's a comment which is kind of how we were, how we've been, um, what we've just been chatting about now. So we sort of wandered off topic, but hey, let's chat anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> this lady says, um, "To reactive dogs, Roger, she's trying hard to keep her dog safe because he's just a pup." And you know, if you're out there socializing your pup, then you want them to have good experiences. Um, but every interaction has been negative because people have got no control of their dogs. So, you know, she's going to puppy classes. She's obviously a responsible person doing the right thing because she's out there trying to get good socializations um, with her dog. And it's a worry with the Jack Russell, you're right, because Jack Russell's exactly the kind of dog to end up with um end up with kind of fear aggression issues. Um mm -hmm. think, you know, like act first, think later kind of terry really tough last you. But yeah, um, yeah, and that's exactly what we've been saying. You know, like it's 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 not a um, not 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 training your dog is not a thing anymore. <laughs> it shouldn't be. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, here we go. Hang on. Here's another comment. We'll here. Um, biggest the biggest learning for me has been to put my dog's needs first. Yeah, so he's a nervous collie needs positive reinforcement often. So I had to make sure the environment is right for him to make sure he's set up for success. Yeah, bang on, Michelle. Boom. Well done. Loving it. Nice, nice work, <laughs> Michelle. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, and if anyone's got anything else they want to they want to chuck in, I suppose what we're what we just wanted to pop up with this one was just to kind of 
So that one of the biggest things that people fall down on, as opposed to the dogs, is our own expectations, isn't it, of this kind of perfect dog that we should have and that I've done this yeah. training and it should work and it should, you know, and, and, it, and it, that just isn't, that's not reality, is it? No, ex exactly, exactly. I mean, is there anybody out there got a, uh, what, what's, what's, I bet you if I, I mean, that then, um, Rona uh, just came up with that comment, that's the kind of point we're making. I'm sure there's other people out there who experience this kind of thing. Um, we just were asking everybody not to be that person. But I mean, I know we will get quite a lot of um, people saying that they might be doing something with their dog. Somebody else's dog is perfectly friendly, perfectly happy. will run up to them and they say, sorry, can you call your dog in? And that other person, the point is they can't call their dog and they've got no recall. The dog might be coming to play, which is fine if the other dog's a sociable dog, it's a comfortable dog, it's, it's a confident dog. The human is the same. Um, but quite often, you know, that, that's not always the case. So we have more control. The long line that very few people seem to know about. It's nothing magical about it. It's the, it's the biggest area when we're talking about recall, therefore control uh, of your dog. Um, it's the biggest area that people miss out. So yeah, that's, that's what you should be looking at. Yeah, cool. Um, I think that, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's, I feel like we've kind of covered that topic A in terms of like managing your own expectations as a person. And we've kind of varied off into, um, very yeah. kind of the, the current situation <laughs> yeah, yeah the current yeah. situation with with dogs and and dog training and um what's it heather oh heather's a member saying what she said um dog is on a long line unless we are alone due to having an awful injury da, 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 da. she's super anxious because um she, she doesn't want to get hurt again and she's nervous around other dogs and we never seem to meet any calm well-behaved dogs yeah hard heather like really hard um it's the kind of thing really you probably need to try and set up you need to i know again it's really hard <laughs> it's a really really difficult thing isn't it because mm. when you're trying to set yourself up in those training situations you you don't um you know you've got no control over other people's dogs so when you're trying to do training it can be really hard um to do that so yeah i guess yeah. it's trying yeah. to find somebody that you can do that with you know trying to find a nice calm dog to to help mm. um to help your dog get over she says she is yeah yeah i'm sure you are Heather. absolutely i'm sure you are um, mm. but yeah tricky one maybe try and do some more focusing work with that dog you know if it, again i don't know where you are where you live but if people in cities and there's lots of so many distractions it's really really hard uh, to to get our dogs focused when the dog is nervous about many things maybe sights or smells or things um, that's the dogs really want to start asking them to do the focus work that we, that, that we teach so the dog has an option of rather than concentrating that fearful thing that you give it a positive option to come towards you who's a food related thing but, um, yeah focus work yeah cool have you, um, have you got anything else to add on I think about half an hour or so so yeah that's just don't want to no uh, I don't think so um, we, we'll, we'll probably we'll kind of build this up and start talking about different subjects whatever. Um, yeah if you are going to I'm going to try and do this every Monday, eh? so if anyone's got anything they want us to cover, um, it's, you know, like it's more, this isn't, it's not like a specific, I mean, we'll cover specific training stuff eh, as much as we can, but it's not really going to be a forum for like really in-depth training questions, but, um, you know, like general topics and, and stuff, so, um, yeah. But by the way, any members out there will still be doing our members, our, our, our really Oh, yeah, week. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's where we cover our real in-depth questions, isn't it, really? We have Zoom with the members every Tuesday and they get that proper yeah. kind of like two-way personal sort of help so yeah, yeah. but yeah um, any, any time pop up monday if you've got, if you've got something we can help you with fire away see what we can do yeah that's great so yeah there we go there is no such thing as the perfect dog perfect for you maybe but not perfect in terms of exactly uh, <laughs> yeah exactly our, our dogs are perfect for us but you know it's always a work in progress <laughs> Exactly, and that's the other thing, you know, people say to me, you know, uh, how long does it take to train a dog? And I say, there's no such thing as a trained dog, past tense. Training is not a, it's not an event. It's just, you don't do something and it stops. It's just foundations. So you keep, yeah, keep building them up. You maintain them. And it's, and it just continues all the time that you and your dog are together. It becomes easier and easier as, as life becomes easier together. But you're always doing something. I quite often go for away for, quite often used to uh, go away for holidays for maybe two three weeks sometimes a month depending on where it was going and whoever that person who was a close friend of mine who knew all my rules and uh, knew how to handle auto and not change anything but obviously because we're all different when i came back auto was doing something different because you know that his environment had changed and he'd, he'd adjusted to that new environment and that's that was me having to retweak back to what i wanted for him as opposed to what he'd been used to 
that kind of thing. So yeah, training, you, you, it's, it's always evolving, you're always doing it. So don't look for an end to training is really what I'm saying. Don't look for that perfection and, and strive for it. You just get frustrated. But do the best you can, bring the best dog, best, best of your dog out that you can and uh, aim for a go anywhere dog and you'll be happy together. That's the best thing. Yeah. Super. Well, good. thanks for your time, guys, and we'll um, we'll catch you next Monday for another chat. We'll, we'll come something good, good topic for a chat. Cool. Take it easy. Thanks, guys. Bye, bye, guys. Bye, bye. See you now. Bye, bye.